Welcome to video two of environmental wellness with an external focus. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about actions we can take in three areas of environmental wellness, which we discussed in our last video. In other words, how can we apply a new mindset around environmental wellness in ways that enhance our experience in the areas of globally, locally, and culturally? Now, as a reminder, these areas are more defined as the following. So first was globally. Globally is basically what we do that impacts the environment around the earth. And this can be everything from taking actions around recycling, to reusing certain items, to basic fuel consumption in our vehicles and monitoring where and when we decide to drive gas powered cars. Regardless, globally is something that impacts us not only in an, in an environment around us, but around the planet. Locally, locally is what we do that impacts the environment in our immediate surroundings, our work or at home. This can be everything from cleanliness to security to just how we pick up the clutter that's all around us on a daily basis. And then finally, and something that I think is really important that oftentimes people don't talk about is culturally. So what do we do that impacts the environment from the standpoint of attitude, of leadership, and basically a demonstration of respect and empathy for others? So let's look at globally and locally combined first. The University of Omaha worked extensively on this subject and has some guidance for us in this particular section. These guidance questions can help us take great actions around work and at home. So number one is, am I aware of the human impact on the environment? And like I said in the first video this month, we want to take our political viewpoint out of it. In fact, I think it's oftentimes our political views and the way the media maybe talks about these issues that can get us off topic and can get us away from what really matters, which is protecting our great environment, which is what we should all be working towards every day. So the first question is, am I aware of the human impact on the environment? Do I even think about or consider the things that I do every day and how they might impact the greater environment around me, both locally and globally. So do I consider the seven R's with the products and materials I consume? Now, if you don't know what the seven R's are, they're very simply this, rethink, refuse, reduce, repair, reuse, recycle, and replace. I know in my own life, these are things that we think about as a family. I have four kids, I'm married, you know, we live in Colorado, and every day we are thinking about what are these seven R's? Now, I'm not saying we get up every day and we run through a checklist, but certainly when I'm about to buy something for the family or my wife is, we do consider, you know, is this something that we need to buy? Is this something that we have at home that I can fix or that we can have repaired? Is this something that we can reuse? You know, we even use the simplest of items like recycled bags that can be used at the grocery store that we reuse over and over again. So we're layering these ideas. And I know it seems silly to want to put a checklist together every day, but if you just keep these seven R's in your mind, it will help you to frame how and what you do every day around all of the products that we consume as human beings on this planet. The next question was, do I find time to spend outdoors in nature? Now, this is something big. Obviously, I love to be outside. I love to hike. I love to work in the yard. I love to do lots of outside things. But oftentimes, regardless of where you live, it's as simple as just getting outside and taking a walk and looking at nature, reflecting on nature. I think one of the things that we have lost as human beings is this concept of being able to stare at nature in action. Maybe it's a tree moving in the wind, maybe it's animals walking around if you live in an environment where you can actually observe animals, but just being able to spend time outdoors in nature. You know, nature tends to work in a great balance. And so oftentimes if we can watch nature, if we can observe it, if we can spend time in nature, it can make a huge impact on how we see our actions and our thoughts. Another question that was asked is, do I work to ensure the stability and the longevity of natural resources? I know for me, I can't speak for you, but for me right now with gas prices being what they are, I am constantly wondering, do I need to take that extra trip today, that extra drive? Do I need to go to the store? Can I layer certain store trips in one day so I'm not going constantly back each day? And am I actually thinking about how what I do every day 
impacts the longevity of natural resources. Again, this should not be something heavy, but I'm just asking myself these questions. And then another question is, how do the products I consume every day and that I use all the time, how do these impact the environment? And are there other alternatives? But again, how can you take action in the environment you work in each day? Now here we see environmental activities are those that help our living, our learning, and our working spaces to stay safe, clean, comfortable and welcoming. Now here are just some quick examples of how you can engage in this at work and at home. Recycling. Recycling is something that I know I personally resisted for a very long time, but now I really do enjoy recycling certain items. I look for items that I can purchase that I know that can be recycled. And obviously in our work environment, there are a lot of initiatives out there about how we can recycle. It doesn't seem like that recycling makes this massive difference when you're doing it because you're just maybe taking a bottle and throwing it into the recycling bin. But overall, these recyclable items can then be sold back to us and recycled again and again. So recycling is a great small way to do our part. Another one is to clean out home clutter or reorganize your workspace. I know for me, there are many times, even as I look around the studio here, where I'll drop a piece of paper there, or I'll put a note down here, or I'll drop a folder of something over there. And after a while, these things start to build up. We all have what we would call a junk drawer at home. And I know for us, sometimes that becomes three junk drawers that we have to clean out. So cleaning out home clutter is actually just a great way to make space for new things or make space just in general so you feel more organized. And then in the work environment, we have things like safety bingo. We have things where we conduct safety rounds with frontline workers in many of the departments. Again, these are just ways to check in to make sure that we're really on point when it comes to being safe, secure, and uncluttered. Then we have other items that are going around right now that you can leverage like the safety scavenger hunt, the office green plant challenge. These are all ways to make safety and decluttering kind of fun and engaging, and we can all take part in it. Now again, we don't want these to be distracting activities, but they are great ways to just keep at the front of our mind are we making our environments better, safer, cleaner, and more sustainable? Now, remember we talked about on the last video, environmental wellness is not simply a recycling plan or about global climate change, and it's not only about the world or our local set and setting. While these are important, we see environmental wellness additionally as also including that last section we discussed on the last video, cultural environment. Now, cultural environment takes a little more discussion. So here are some quick tools to reset your own personal thinking and actions at work that can enhance the culture around you. If you remember in the last video, I discussed how we only have control over one person truly, and that's ourselves, our own individual thoughts and actions. Hopefully these tools will help you get or maintain that self-control. One of the keys I like to teach our team a lot is say, my attitude dictates my experience. True story, I was at an airport one time and a guy was going through the TSA line in front of me. He had obviously had a little too much to drink. He was arguing with the TSA agents about taking his computer out of his bag. His attitude was about to dictate his experience. They requested that he do this several times. They were very kind to him. Finally, he threw his computer bag because again, he was a little intoxicated. He threw it at one of the TSA agents and said, why don't you take it out if it's so important? Now, his attitude definitely dictated his experience. Because of his negative attitude, because of his inability to control himself, he ended up dealing with the local police department at the airport. So. You see, your attitude can make a massive difference in the experiences you have throughout any day. So the question I want you to ask yourself is, how can I shift my attitude in this moment to move it towards a more positive outcome? Again, take responsibility over the only person you can, and that's yourself. And then another piece I like to talk about around culture is, remember, it's not about winning. See, oftentimes human beings, we feel like we need to be right. We need to win. We need to win an argument or a discussion. We need to be right all the time instead of working to get it right. So your need to be right, your need to win in times of conflict 
can actually often create a very negative situation. So the question is, who really wins if you fight with negativity? If you win or lose an argument, does the outcome for the culture improve or does it get worse? If that arguing persists, does the culture get better or does it get worse? Who loses? See, this is the question you need to ask yourself. Instead, what you want to work towards is to create what we call understanding, listening, and encouragement to solve a challenge together. Remember, it's not about being right. It's about working as a team to get it right. And then there's demonstrate empathy. Now we are all going through something, all of us, every human being. And you don't really know at any moment what someone else is managing or what they're struggling with. So we have to work to demonstrate empathy, not just talk about it, not just say it, but to really demonstrate empathy by remembering you may not know everything about that person. So as an example, just the other day, we were eating at a restaurant here in a town where I live. And the waitress is not only a friend of ours, but she works there as a manager also. She was having a really rough time. I was observing her. She was frustrated with customers. She was a little short with us and kind of frustrated. And again, we know her. So I just asked her, I said, hey, how are you? How are things going? Everything okay? So she broke down and told us she was having a very big struggle at home. Something terrible had happened with her husband's health over the weekend. And she was really just frustrated and anxious and tired and just overall really agitated. So we just kind of talked to her and listened to her and she went on about her shift. But again, if I hadn't known her, it would have been very easy to judge her, to, to talk about her in a negative way and to make an assumption that I kind of thought maybe she was being rude because she felt like being rude. Instead of thinking about and having empathy for the fact that maybe she was going through something. So remember, we're all going through something. That person at work, every day, uh, if, if sometimes they're just feeling agitated or they're frustrated, maybe they're going through something. And so we need to try to, again, see the world from their perspective. Maybe talk more, maybe listen more, maybe see if they need to be heard or to have some time alone. Either way, we have to demonstrate empathy, not just talk about it. From a global focus on climate and clean water, to a local focus on organized facilities, to how we impact the culture around us, environmental wellness is critical to our well being and our stress level. Working together, ensuring success in this area will truly feel like a team effort because it takes all of us acting, supporting, and working together to make it happen. We cannot do this alone, we have to do it as a team. Before I leave you, I just want to remind you, don't forget to listen to our very special podcast this month where I talk to several people about environmental wellness at work. And I'm going to see you next month when we start to discuss something I really get excited about, which is physical wellness. Now, in that series of videos, so I'm actually going to leave the studio and I'm going to travel to one of our facilities where I interview experts on how we can all work toward more physical health. I'll see you then. So hopefully by now you're starting to think about ways you can engage in environmental wellness to make your area around you, the world we live in, and our culture even that much better. Now next month we're going to be talking about some really interesting stuff, so make sure you check out our videos as they come out around fitness and physical wellness. <laughs>